Hi everyone, my name is Barbara Howe, and for the last four years I've been working on an admittedly ambitious um, idea to establish a global women's leadership university for women from Asia and the Middle East. The purpose of today's talk, though, isn't about that idea, it's rather how I move that idea closer to reality. So I started this project in 2010, and since then the Malaysian Prime Minister has endorsed this project. We've identified 100 acres of land in Malaysia. Smith College has joined as an academic planning partner. Uh, we've built an international board and advisory council, and as of December 2013, we've raised $6.13 million in, in capital commitments. What I realized today, though, is that there are a lot of young people in this audience, and sometimes people will ask, well, how did you actually do that? And so what I thought I'd do today is take the opportunity to share with you some of the ideas that have worked for me that I hope will work for you. And those three ideas are simple. It's first, it's start with what you have. Second, share little successes. And third, use magic words. So the first idea is start with what you have. So when I started this idea, I was 28 years old, a young person, not wealthy, not well connected, not well established. But I knew I had a compelling idea that I wanted to share with as many people as possible. And I also knew I had friends. So when I wanted to develop a website, I turned to my, my tech savvy friends and I asked if they could help me put something together. When I wanted to develop a proposal, I found some college interns who could help me do the research for it. And when I wanted to incorporate as a nonprofit, I asked my lawyer friend if he could ask his firm to work with us pro bono. I also had OkCupid dates, so whenever I met an investment banker, I would ask if he could look over our financial model. Uh, when I met an architect, I asked if he could come up with some quick campus renderings. So start with what you have, because we all have talented friends, and we all have networks that we can leverage. The second idea is share little successes. So we know that in real estate, the mantra is location, location, location. When you're an entrepreneur, and in particular a social entrepreneur, your mantra is cultivate, cultivate, cultivate. You're going to need to reach out and build relationships with senior people to join your effort. Now, some of those people are going to love your idea. Some of these other people are going to be skeptical of your idea and also of you. How do you begin to overcome some of that skepticism? What I found is the answer is pretty simple. You just share little successes with them. So anytime I had made a small bit of progress, so for example, we developed a website or we drafted a proposal or we found an intern, I would share this little success. And what I realized is that the significance is not how big or small your success is. The important thing is demonstrating a pattern of success and your commitment to work on ideas on an idea. So what you should do is whatever progress you make, you should label it as a success and then you should share it with others and then watch which of your contacts are sprouting, which people are responding to your emails and which people are offering you encouragement. Those people are going to become your supporters. The third idea is use magic words. So originally when I started this idea, you know, I would reach out to various people asking for donations or meetings or support. And I thought, who wouldn't be overcome by my infectious energy or by the compelling nature of this idea. Who wouldn't want to jump on board? But I realized is that my enthusiastic approaches sometimes were an imposition on people. You know, people have lives, they have their own projects, they're working on their own things, they may not always be able to help. And what I learned is that if I could preface these asks by some magic words such as, I know you must be so busy, but what I could do was two things. First is I could signal their importance because that's what busy means. And second, I could give people a graceful exit. So if they couldn't help, um, that would be a Okay. I also realized that in some of my interactions with people, I could kind of come off as imperious or maybe sometimes bossy because I'm, I'm fairly strongly opinionated. Um, and what I learned is if I use four magic words, what do you think at the end of an email or in a conversation, all of a sudden I uh, was branded as collaborative. So you should use these magic <laughs> words because they do help. Um, so these three simple ideas start with what you have. Uh, you share little successes, use magic words. These are small ideas, but they are the small steps that I, I attribute to the milestones that we have achieved thus far. And the beauty of this is that moving on big ideas does seem to come down to these small actionable steps that anybody can take. So I wanted to just step back from this talk and 
uh, one thing I thought of is, who am I to give this talk? You know, I haven't established a university yet. There's still a long way to go. But I realized that actually the important thing isn't necessarily that whether or not I do or don't achieve the dream. It was equally important that I had a dream in the first place and that I tried to work on it. Um, this process has been so personally enriching. I've met so many incredible people. I've been able to live out my, my, my ideas and my ideals um, and to make so many friends with people who not only believed in my vision, but they believed in me. And so it made it all worthwhile. I really hope that everyone in this room continues to dream and to imagine new possibilities for the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.